Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's core stability workout. Uh, as uh, usual, the core stability workout, we're going to focus a lot on core, but we're also going to do other exercises in conjunction with core so that we practice um, activating our core and everything that we do and all the exercises that we do to get a stronger foundation for balance and strength. And I hope you enjoy. So for our warm up, we're going to go through at the same time as I describe, we're going to start standing. Actually, you can sit down. You can do this standing or seated, but we're going to get to the floor later. So I'm going to do it seated. Um, and what you're going to do is I have my hands by my sides and we're going to start with a neck stretch. So putting, bringing your left ear towards your left shoulder. And this stretches out the right side of your neck. And then slowly point your nose down and round it out to then bring your right ear to your right shoulder, getting a stretch down the left side of your neck. And going through your own pace back and forth, left to right. And if you're reaching down through your fingertips, down by your sides, extending that stretch or pushing those fingertips into the floor if you're sitting to really elongate those muscles, being careful with your neck, not crunching or not overextending, but stopping in a sweet spot that feels good for you. From here, we're gonna do a side stretch. So you're going to reach your right arm either down to the floor or down by your side. Left arm goes up over your head and then up and over to the right. And this is gonna stretch out the left side of your body. Big stretch up and over, a few breaths here. And then we switch, left arm down, right arm up and over the head. If you're standing, push those hips out to the right. And we'll repeat, we'll go through this a couple of times. Switching arms, left arm up and over. And the right arm up and over, going through at your own pace, stopping where it feels good. And Continue to go through those side stretches. Feel free to shake anything out. And when you're ready, feel free to even out your sides if you're not finished yet. But when you're ready, come into cat cow and you can meet us here when you're ready. We got cat cow position, tabletop, and you're going to have a flat back. Start with arching your back pointing your belly button down to the ground, lifting your chin off your chest and feeling a stretch in your core muscles. And then you'll take the reverse. You'll arch your back up towards the sky, pushing weight through the palms of your hands, tucking your chin to your chest and go through cat cow at your own pace as well. After this cat cow, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit, start moving the rest of our body. Feel free to get any wiggles out. Again, stopping where it feels good. All right, from here, you're going to curl your toes under and you're going to lift your hips up into a downward dog position. So upside down V shape, arms and legs are straight, <clears throat> hips are to the ceiling. From this downward dog position, you're going to come into a high plank position. So hips down, straight line from the top of your head to the bottom of your heels. And then you'll go back right into downward dog. So flow through that at your own pace. Downward dog to a high plank position, really waking up your core muscles that are activated there in that plank, and then getting some relief there with downward dog while stretching out your half muscles, pushing those heels to the ground. 
when you're ready, we're going to kick the heat up a little bit. We're going to go from that same plank, but we're going to go to three-legged dog. So what that means is starting in your plank position, straight line from your head to your toes. This time going into downward dog, you're going to lift your right leg straight up towards the ceiling. And then when you come down to plank, you'll bring it back down. Next time, lift that left leg straight up to the ceiling. And when you come down, bring it back down. So just adding some extra heat in there, doing that downward dog, changing it to a three-legged dog. If you need to come down to your forearms, if this is a lot on your wrists, feel free. And when you're ready, we can come out of that. Feel free to sit down, roll out your wrists a little bit, and we'll work our way to a sit-up position. So we'll lay on our backs here, feet flat on the floor, knees pointed towards the ceiling. And here we're gonna do some sit-ups. So if you wanna make this a crunch, by all means, make it a crunch. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with my hands up towards the ceiling, fingertips pointed towards the sky, arms are straight. And I'm gonna do a sit-up and when I do that sit up, I'm engaging my ab muscles and I'm going to end up with my legs in an upward tabletop position. So engaging my muscles and then I end up in boat pose when I come up. So feet are off the ground when I come up, knees are bent at a 90 degree angle, arms extended towards my feet on the outsides of my legs. And then when I lower, I put my heels down lower my back down and start in that starting position again. Again, feel free. You can leave your feet anchored down onto the ground. You can just do a crunch, engaging your core in a crunch, whatever serves you. And go ahead and flow through these sit-ups in whatever capacity you choose. Really activating the core here. Keeping those belly buttons tucked in towards the spine. We're getting some curvature in our backs here as we're doing this, waking up our back muscles. Now we're gonna pause with sit-ups or crunches and we're gonna go to do push-ups. Feel free to take push-ups against a wall, on the ground, on your knees. Again, whatever serves you best today. And for our push-ups, just take them at your own pace, straight line from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes, pushing down and up, keeping your whole body stiff as a board. The only thing that moves is your arms. I'm gonna take mine to my knees because that's how I'm gonna get my best form today. Just flowing through at your own pace, waking up your arms. Are we here. supposed to be doing this right now? I missed yep. like the last three minutes. I was giving Gage water. Yep, that's fine. We're just going through some push-ups here. All right. Waking up our core. All right, shake anything out, and then we're gonna get into the last and part of our warm up to really fire up our core. I just got a sip of water. Um, we're gonna do planks. So we're gonna do a 30 second plank, front side body down. So just a standard plank. You can either choose to do that on your forearms or you can do it straight armed. After we do that plank, we're gonna do a right side plank for 30 seconds and then a left side plank for 30 seconds. Again, option to do full straight arm or have your forearm on the ground with your elbow bent. Does anyone have any questions about planks in any direction before we start that? All right, so let's start with a 30 second plank, just a standard plank. So get in your ready positions. I'll count us down, five, four, three, two, one, start, 30 second plank. So breathe through this here, straight line from the top of your head to the 
bottom of your heels, keeping those abs engaged. And you want to have your tailbone tucked under. So that prevents your hips from going up to the sky, but also from dipping too low. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. And let's go on to our right side and do a right side plank in five, four, three, two, one, go. So my right elbow is on the ground, right forearm's on the ground. Putting my left hand on my hip because that's what's best for me. You can reach your left hand up towards the sky if you want to. This is really getting those right obliques in check here. Trying to keep your hips lifted. Try not to let them dip down. If you need to drop your bottom knee, you can. We have five seconds left. Three, two, one, rest. All right, and now let's go to the left side. So getting ready on our left side, left forearm down or straight arm plank. Starting at five, four, three, two, one. Let's hit it, last plank. All right, so my left elbow or left wrist, if you're doing straight arm plank, is right underneath your shoulder. Uh, your obliques are engaged, your core is engaged. Keeping those hips high, breathing through it. Nice job. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice job, everybody. Way to cruise through that warm up. We are going to get into a couple different flows here now. We'll get some music pumping. So let's get to it. First flow is gonna focus on some lower body movements. So strengthening quads, hamstrings. And what we're going to do is we're gonna start with squats that are with your feet shoulder width apart. And then from the squats, we'll squat and then we'll do some high knees. So you'll squat down, lift your right knee up to do a standard high knee, squat back down, and then we'll stay right. And then from there, we'll widen our stance, point our toes outward and do some sumo squats, keeping our torso nice and upright for these sumo squats. So the tailbone tucked under. And then from there, we'll switch sides. Does anyone have any questions about squats, high knees or wide sumo squats? All right, let's cruise. I'll get some music playing. As always, let me know if it's too much, too little. And we will start with shoulder width squats. In three, two, one. I'm putting my hands out straight in front of me. Feel free to put them in a prayer position, put them on your hips, whatever works best. When you're squatting back, sink that bottom back nice and far. You're hinging at the waist, so. Your chest does come to a diagonal, so you're not putting your chest directly towards the floor. You still want to keep upright just a tad. All right, now we're going to add that high right knee. So squat, high knee, down. Stay on the right side. Squat every time you come up, right high knee. Just adding some extra instability for your core to help engage, keep you balanced here. You get your own pace. Three, two, one, sumo squat. Get those feet out wide, point them to the diagonal, pin into a clock. Bend down so your knees are stacked over your ankles. Big squat, and then come back up. So my knees are wider than shoulder width apart. My tailbone is tucked here, so I'm not hinging forward at my waist. My hands are in a prayer position. Feel free to have them on your hips if that helps with balance. That strong tuck of your tailbone here is gonna add some resistance for you. You might knock it down as low, but it keeps that core engaged to help for balance. Nice job. This next one, option to add high heels. So, Option to keep squatting and keep your heels lifted the entire time. 
option to keep those heels down. Do whatever you have best form doing. You don't want to compromise form and safety. Good job. Three, two, one. Back to shoulder width squat. Toes point forward. Squat it back. Shoulder width apart. Feel the burn. Nice job. In three, we'll start adding a left high knee. One, two, three. Lift left knee, squat down. Go at your own pace. Adding in stability so that your core activates. Keep you balanced. All right. In three, two, one. Wide sumo squat. Toes pointed outward. Feet wider than shoulder width apart. So when you bend down, Ideal is a 90 degree angle, knee stacked over your ankle. Chest is up. Tailbone is tucked all the way under to help keep your core engaged, protect your lower back here. Option to add lifted heels. Keep it up. Good job, everybody. Three, two, one, rest. Shake it out. I'll pop with our music here. How does everyone feel? Stiff. My butt hurt. All right, wiggle out anything you need to wiggle out. Stretch it out. I'm wiggling my legs, kicking them around a little bit. Getting some water. So next up in our flow, we are going to start with kneeling hip drives. These are gonna feel good tomorrow. So I'm gonna get down to my knees and I'm gonna sit on my feet. My knees are about fist distance apart. And if that's not available to you and you make them wider, do what feels good. So. With these kneeling hip drives, first, we're going to tuck our tailbone all the way under. You're gonna stay so your torso is straight up. So when you tuck your tailbone under, you're going to attempt to lift your glutes off of your feet just a few inches. When you do that, you might feel the need to lean forward so your shoulders come and hinge, and that's to help relieve some weight off your muscles. Let your muscles do it. Keep those shoulders stacked over those hips and you're gonna raise your glutes a few inches off your seat, after, off your butt, off your feet. After you do that, then we're gonna go into some different types of lifts. So we'll end up sitting all the way up straight legs um, so that you're standing on your knees and we'll go back down again. From there, we'll get up and we'll do some different types of side lunges and high knees, um, lateral high knees. Does anyone have any questions about any of those before we get started? All right, I'll get the music going and we're gonna start with our kneeling hip drives. Three, two, one. All right, so we're kneeling, sitting on our uh, feet. You're going to tuck your tailbone under, lift your uh, bottom just off your feet, just an inch or so. And once you do this, you are really engaging your core muscles, you're engaging your thigh muscles, keeping your shoulders stacked over your hips. Hold this for three, two, one. All right, now stand up straight. Use those uh, quad muscles 
So now your shoulders are over your knees. Sitting up tall, standing on your knees. Come back down to your heels and then come back up. So do this at your own pace. Bottom down to your feet. Sitting straight up, standing on your knees. You drive your hips forward to get here. Engage your glutes and engage your quad, your thigh muscles. All right, now when you're up here, you're gonna just hinge back a little bit. So keeping a straight line, just leaning back, engaging your core to protect your back. And every time you move just an inch back, you should feel a little bit of a stretch, a pull in your thighs. All right, come back down to your, to your heels. And let's move on to side lunges. So I'm gonna stand up tall. I'm gonna step my feet wider than the shoulder width apart. Toes face forward. I'm gonna bend my right knee so that and keep my left leg straight and switch. Bend left knee, bend right knee. When you're here, it is okay to hinge forward, hinging at the waist. So your upper body is at a diagonal towards the ground and side lunging. Just keep side lunging side to side. Keeping that knee that's bending tracks over your ankle so you're not putting too much pressure, too much weight in your knees. All right, from here, we're gonna stay right. So lunge right, and then you're going to balance on your left leg, lateral high knee to the right. So you want your right knee to point out to your right as much as you can. Then return it back down, go right into that bent right leg lunge. Standing up straight, lateral right high knee, back down to that lunge. So when you come up to do your lateral right high knee, you want your knee pointed out to the right, out to your side, toe pointed, step back down, toe pointed forward, putting lots of pressure here on your left leg to stabilize, your core to stabilize. And get that bit of relief when you come back down for that right lunge. All right, now we're gonna just go lunging side to side again. Left to right, left to right. If you wanna make these skater jumps, option to make them skater jumps, reaching across, reaching across. Or stick, stick with that side lunge. Nice job, everybody. All right. Now we're going to do side lunge to the left. Left lateral high knee. Side lunge to the left. Left lateral high knee. So here... With our lateral high knee, we're activating our outer glutes. Using your core to stabilize. Pull that belly button in. Tuck that tailbone under. All right. And back to those side lunges. Nice job. All right, three, two, one, and rest. Nice job. How's everybody feeling? Silence. <laughs> Hope everybody's Good. feeling okay. <laughs> Yay. All right. So next up, we're gonna get onto the floor and do some glute work. So again, with anything, keep your core engaged as we activate our glute muscles. So first exercise is gonna be clamshells. So I'll break these down before we go through the flow. Clamshells, I'm gonna just, for talking through it, I'm gonna lay on my left side. I'm gonna let rest my, um, head on my left arm, using my left arm as a pillow, or you can have your left arm bent. I like to have my elbow underneath my left shoulder. 
and have my forearm on the ground, whatever's more comfortable for you. Right arm is down on the ground, um, just in front of my chest, my rib cage. And then I'm laying down with my knees bent and they're stacked over each other. So they're bent at about a 90 degree angle. Toes are together. So my right leg is on top because I'm laying on my left side. So I'm gonna just keeping my feet together. I'm gonna lift my right leg up and keeping the same shape. So keeping that um, bent knee, lifting my right knee up to the ceiling. So when I open my legs, it's like a diamond shape and then I close them again. So it's like my legs are creating a clam that the shell is opening and closing. To do these, you're wanting to engage your, um, your bottom, the muscles in your bottom, your glutes, and these are clam shells. Does anyone have any questions about clam shells? Tara, do I turn my knee to face the ceiling or does my right knee stay facing the wall? Uh, my knee does turn to face the ceiling so that I can get a wider range. Does anyone else have any other questions? All right, then from there, we'll go into our bird dog position. So that's tabletop and that's um, opposite arm and opposite leg are extended out straight and behind us. So arm forward, leg behind, and we'll do some lifts there. We'll do some bird dog crunches. Anyone have questions about bird dogs? I know we've done those quite a bit in other sessions. Okay, so we're gonna start with clamshells on the right, we'll go to the left and then we'll do some bird dog stuff. Alrighty, so starting with, let's do clamshells laying on our left in case you're there already. And let's pick a, a nice song for this. All right, so starting in three, two, one, clamshell. Laying on our left side, elbow underneath the shoulder, right palm is planted on the ground. Knees are stacked above each other, legs are bent. Right knee to the ceiling and back down. Engaging those glute muscles. We're gonna do this for a while because I want you to feel the burn in your glute. Engage your core while you're here to help stabilize. The core is activated here. Help you balance, protect your back. If you're feeling any tension in your shoulders or your neck, let that go. Take a deep exhale. The slower you do the more you'll feel it in your side glutes here. Job. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's rotate five. So flipping over onto your right side, right forearm down, shoulder or elbow is right underneath your shoulder, left palm on the ground in front of your torso. Legs are bent, feet are together, 90 degrees. And lift your left knee up towards the ceiling and then back down, keeping that bend. Release any tension in your shoulders and your neck. Feel this in your side glute. Engaging those muscles. Job, Definitely feeling it. Hope that y'all are feeling it as well. And nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
one. All right, we're gonna go into tabletop position from here. And we're gonna start our bird dogs. If you need to wiggle out any cat cows or wiggle out anything that feels funky, feel free to do that. And we're gonna get into our bird dog pose. So, right arm is gonna extend straight out in front of me. Left leg is gonna extend straight behind me. If you need to choose one or the other for right now, that is totally fine. Pick one and roll with it. Now from here, we're going to bring our uh, right arm down and our left leg down to just tap the ground and then lift them back up. So my right pinky reaches down, taps it, still keeping that extension and then back down and the top of my left foot reaches the ground and comes back up. So just doing some lift here and lower. Keeping your core engaged here. You don't want to have a big dip in your lower back. You want to protect that by engaging your core. Keeping your head in line with your spine will help any tension in your neck. All right, bring those back down, shake anything out. We're gonna go to the other side. Left arm extends out straight in front of you. Right leg set, extends out behind you. Bring those arms and legs down and then up at your own pace. Tap the ground, lift, tap the ground, lift. Keeping that core engaged to protect the lower back. Nice job. All right. After I count down, we'll come back to tabletop position. Three, two, one, tabletop position. Now we're gonna do bird dog crunches. So right arm extends out again, left leg extends behind you. And you're gonna bring opposite elbow to opposite knee, left or right elbow to left knee, and then extend back out. So bring them in towards your torso, extend them out. And repeat. Bird dog crunches. Now what were we just doing before that? Leg and arm lifts and lowers. I know you're thinking I'm heartless. I know you're thinking I'm good. I'm just protecting my innocence. Three, I'm just two, one, come down, let's switch. Left arm extended, right arm behind, or right leg behind and opposite elbow to opposite knee and extend. Keeping that core engaged. Really engaging your core with that little crunch to bring your elbow and your knee together. Good job. All right, three. Two, one, back to tabletop position and shake it out. We're going to move on to our next. I'll pause the music here. Shake anything out. I'm going to get a sip of water. And our two flows left are core flows. So we have for our first core flow, we are going to do bicycle crunches so for bicycle crunches you want to have your hands rested by your lower head where your head is um, meeting your neck elbows are out wide so you want your elbows to point left and right and this having your elbows pointed out wide really encourages your core to do the work rather than having your arms pull your head so from here your opposite elbow to opposite knee and then back down elbows wide so left elbow comes to right knee back down right elbow comes to left knee if you'd like to add the leg extension when left elbow meets right knee left leg extends out straight hovering off the ground then switch right leg extends out straight hovering off the ground you want your initial movement here to come from your core, squeezing so hard 
that it lifts your shoulder blades off the ground. So if you're feeling any tension in your neck, try to get that first pull from your core rather than from your neck leading your shoulders off the ground. Uh, any questions about bicycle crunches? All right, next up will be scissor switches. So you'll rest your head on the ground. This will give your neck a little bit of a break, arms down on the ground by your sides. Then we're gonna do scissor switches and we're gonna do them laterally. So you're gonna put your, cross your right foot in front of your left foot, legs are straight pointed towards the ceiling. And then you're just gonna do a quick switch. Left foot crosses in front of right foot. So my legs, don't ever really come more than eight inches away from each other. They're constantly pointing at the ceiling. I'm just switching which leg is crossed in front of the other, keeping my legs straight, toes pointed towards the ceiling. Those are gonna be our scissor switches today. Any questions about those? How far off the ground are your heels? My Toes are pointed towards the ceiling, so my legs are straight up and down. And if they don't, if your legs don't get there and you need to have a little bit of a bend in order to get your legs or your toes and heels pointed towards the ceiling, that's okay too. Same work. Are there any other questions about the scissor switches? Okay. And then we're gonna go into penguins to get our obliques one more time. So feet flat on the floor, knees pointing towards the ceiling, arms by our sides. You're gonna engage your core to lift your shoulder blades off the ground. And then you're going to reach with your right hand to reach for your right heel. And then come back center, reach with your left hand to reach your left heel. So you're going to go back and forth, getting your obliques, the side muscles of your abs, keeping those shoulder blades lifted the entire time. Any questions about bicycle crunches, scissor switches, or penguins? All right, we're gonna go through that sequence three times and then we're gonna do another core circuit. Okay, so we're gonna start with bicycle crunches and remember all the variations you can take there. In three, two, one, go. Bicycle crunches. Option to extend your legs out long when they're not pulling opposite, opposite elbow. Option to just bring them back down. Flat on the floor. All right, in three, two, one, for scissor kick. So arms down, head rested. Toes pointed towards the ceiling, legs up and down. Get those legs as straight as you can. Might even have a little bit of a bend in them. Cross, crisscross. Right leg comes over left leg, left leg goes over right leg. Good job. Three, two, one. Feet flat down, penguin. Get your penguin on. Lift those shoulder blades off the ground. Right hand to right heel, left hand to left heel. The more laterally you move, the more you'll feel that crunch in your oblique. After this set, we'll run right back into our bicycle crunches. In three, two, one, bicycle crunches. Keep those shoulder blades lifted, opposite elbow to opposite knee. Three, two, one, head rested, scissor switches. Legs straight up to the ceiling, switch, switch. Pushing your low back down into the ground as you do this. For more of a challenge, you can bring your heels a little bit to a diagonal. That activates your low abs a little bit more. Good 
three, two, one, penguin. Off, er, right hand to right heel, left hand to left heel. Totally lift it off the ground. Dog, little shoulder blades lifted. Engage your core. Low back press into the mat. All right, getting ready for our last set of these. Three, two, one, bicycle crunches. Let's go. Opposite elbow, opposite knee. Nice job. Three, two, one, head press it, legs to the ceiling, scissor switch. Bring those legs to a diagonal if you want to activate those little abs even more, but only doing so if you can keep your low back glued to the ground. Protect your lower back in all that you do. Breath. And we'll switch to penguins in three, two, one. Feet down and penguins. Shoulder blades off the ground. Right hand to right heel, left hand to left heel. Waddling side to side like penguins do. Shoulder blades hovering off the ground. Nice job. Deep breath. And three, two, one. Breath. Pause our tunes here. Nice job, everybody. Core should be fired up. And we have one more core set today. Feel free to wiggle anything out, stretch anything out. Make yourself ready for our final flow. We have. First up, crunches with tabletop taps is what I'm calling them. <laughs> so we're gonna do a crunch. So we're gonna have our feet on the floor, um, knees pointed towards the ceiling and feel free to just rest during this time that I'm explaining. Um, what you're going to do is you can have your hands behind your head, elbows pointed to either side. What you're going to do is a crunch. So Engage your core to lift your shoulder blades off the ground and then back down. Then what you're going to do, so that's upper abs there. And now we're gonna add in some lower abs as well. So I do my crunch, I go back down and then I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna lift my feet up so that they're in like a tabletop, upside down tabletop position. So my shins are parallel to the ceiling and then I'm gonna lower them back down. And when I do that, I'm engaging my core and pushing my lower back into the ground. So that's what adds the challenge there. So you're gonna do an upper body crunch and then to engage your lower abs, lift those shins parallel to the ceiling and then tap your toes back down. Does anyone have any questions about these crunches with tabletop taps as I'm calling them? <laughs> no? All right, next up is gonna be hundreds. So hundreds, I believe we've done these multiple times before, but we're going to start, you can either have your feet flat on the floor, knees pointed towards the ceiling, or you can lift them up into that upside down tabletop, shins parallel with the ceiling, curl your um, chin to your chest, lift those shoulder blades off the ground, and you're gonna extend your arms out straight, palms face down, and you're gonna pump your hands and your arms down a few inches and up a few inches. Pump, 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 pump at a quick pace to keep your arms engaged and keep your abs engaged. Those are hundreds. Any questions about hundreds? All right. And then finally, we'll end with leg lifts. 
so keeping your lower back glued to the ground. We'll start with our legs towards the ceiling, toes pointed, and then you'll lower your legs down to a diagonal and then back up to the ceiling, stopping before your back peels off the ground. If your back peels off the ground, just shorten the range that you're lowering and lifting your legs. For that, I like to keep my legs glued together like one big long leg. Any questions about leg lifts? All right, let's get to it. So last flow, we, depending on time, we might only go through this one two times. And let's get started. So starting with crunches with tabletop taps in three, two, one. Upper body crunch, lower back down, tabletop tap. Upper abs and then lower abs. Good job, everybody. All right, switching to hundreds. Three, two, one. Hundred. Pump those arms. Option for your legs and upside down tabletop. Option to have them down the ground. Shoulder blades lifted off the ground. Job. And in three, two, one, rest your head, leg lift, like to the ceiling, then to the diagonal. Lift and lower. Only going until you feel some extra pressure from your lower back, protecting your lower back and coming back up when you feel that. All right, in three, two, one. Crunches to tabletop tap. Crunch. Tap. I'll make these a little bit shorter so we can get through three times. Three, two, one, hundred. Shoulder blades lifted. Pump those on. Breathing as you do so. Three, two, one, head rest, leg lifts and lowers. To the ceiling, to the diagonal. Ceiling, to the diagonal. All right, three, two, one, last round. Crunches with the tabletop tap. Breathe through it. All right, three, two, one hundred. Pump those arms, shoulder blades lifted. Good job, breathe through it. And three, two, one, rest your head and leg lifts and lowers. Last round, breathe through it. Checking over back here. Lower you move more it hurts. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice job. I'll pause our music here. Take it out. You made it through a core stability workout on this fine Monday. Woohoo! I'm proud yeah. of you <laughs> all. right. So we're going to go into our cool down now and start some stretches, really paying attention to our core and our back here. And then we did use a lot of our legs. So making sure we get that stretched out as well. 
So let's start in cat cow. As always, feel free to stretch along with me or do your own stretches. So cat cow, arching your back up as we discussed in the warm up, and dipping your belly low. When I dip into cow here, I can really feel the stretch in my core after all that work we did. Flowing through at your own pace. I'm gonna go into downward dog here, lifting my hips to the sky, pushing my heels down. Notice how this might feel different than when we first started today in our warm up. And I'm gonna come down and out of that. I'm going to do a one-legged butterfly here. So I'm going to sit down, pull my left leg in. My left leg is bent. My right leg is straight and it's out to a diagonal. And then I'm gonna reach with my right hand towards my right toes and then reach my left arm up and over. So my chest is faced out and up. Breathing through the stretch. And then you can rotate your chest towards your right leg, reach both arms towards your toes. Few breaths here and let's switch. Left leg goes out, right leg comes into a half butterfly. Left fingertips reach towards left toes, right arm comes up and over, chest is pointed out and up. Getting a side bend stretch here as well as a leg stretch. And when you're ready, rotate, point your chest down, reach both arms towards your left foot. Nice job. Now going into that full butterfly pose, soles of your feet together, knees pointed out to each side with nice big bends in them. Going into a stretch to make it feel better for you, whether that's leaning forward, sitting up taller. Deep breaths. I'm then going to extend my legs out straight into a wide straddle stretch. Legs are in a V shape, reaching my arms to the center of my legs, in that empty space. Reaching forward as far as you can. For me, it's not very far. <laughs> And coming back up, going into a seated forward fold, reaching my arms up over my head and then bending forward, reaching for my toes, landing on my shins today. Oh, actually, I'm getting a little touch on my toes. Good job for me today. <laughs> Taking deep breaths. All right, slowly coming out of that, I'm going to go into child's pose. Getting into tabletop position, pointing my toes or pointing my knees out, toes together behind me, sinking my bottom back towards my toes, reaching my arms forward, bringing my forehead down to the ground. Deep breaths here. If it feels good here, you can move your arms both to the right, left hand stacked on top of the right hand, or to the left with your right hand stacked on top of your left hand, or you can stay center, or rotate through all three of those options. Taking deep breaths, 
please feel free to stretch out anything else you feel we missed. Stretch out anything to set yourself up for success tomorrow so you feel a little bit less soreness, a little more rejuvenated. And thank you everyone so much for coming today.